Hi, tech fans. Oppo wants to become the new number one. In China, they already are, but for the rest of the world, they are spending a lot of money. A ringtone made by Hans Zimmer, a camera in cooperation with Hasselblad and its own processor. And of course, the backplate. It takes 186 hours to manufacture, but is the Oppo Find X5 Pro worth it? The design language is similar to the predecessor. The organic shaped bag softly merges with the camera element. The polished, uninterrupted ceramic is incredibly scratch resistant, but a bit more brittle than glass. For more grip, I would have preferred to see the matte coating from last year again. The camera element has a unique shape without any sharp edges, the lenses are recessed and they don't have a metal ring around them. Whether you think the design is pretty is one thing, but it's original and the build quality is stunning. The IP68 water protection verifies that. I do have two ideas for the successor. Just get rid of the aluminium frame in favor of a ceramic unibody. And come on, is the Oppo company address on the back really necessary? The display has very thin edges and is 6.7 inches big. It's protected by Gorilla Glass Victus and uses OLED. The resolution is Quad HD Plus and a refresh rate 1 to 120 Hz, with 1000 Hz sampling rate thanks to LTPO. It supports 10-bit colors and HDR. Everything of course looks fantastic. Watching videos is a blast and the stereo speakers are nice and loud. It's exactly the same display as its predecessor, which means the typical brightness of 800 nits full screen and 1300 nits peak is lower than Samsung or Apple. I would have loved to see symmetrical bezels and even though the fingerprint sensor is good and now in a more convenient position, the huge ultrasonic one of the iQ9 Pro would have been more appropriate at that price. iQ and Oppo belong to the same parent company. The hardware on the other hand is top notch. A Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 with 12 gigs of RAM and 265 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage. It doesn't get any better than that. And it shows. This is how I imagine a 2022 flagship. Everything responds immediately, all animations are battery smooth, games have maximum details at 120 FPS. Android 12 is pre-installed on the Find X5 Pro. Oppo says they will provide 3 years of updates, that's healthy average. Since OnePlus and Oppo merged, the software of the two has become more similar. I really like it. Even though it is far from pure Android, the logic is similar and there is not only the nicest selection of preloaded wallpapers I know, but also a ton of customization options. There even is a video that shows you how great and tactile the vibration motor can be. The exclusive ringtone from Hans Zimmer is nice, but I can hardly show it because of copyright. By the way, this is my fourth video. So so if you like it, a sub to the channel would help a lot. Time to talk about the main deal, the camera. And at first glance you may think, well, nothing has changed. You might even think it has gotten worse because the microscope is gone. But instead, everything just got a little bit better. The lens of the main camera is not plastic, like on other smartphones, but glass for a better color reproduction and less chromatic apparition. The aperture has been slightly opened to 1.7 and it's the world's first smartphone with a 5-axis stabilization. It's both sensor shift and OIS. Without digital crop, the image always pans smoothly, almost like on a gimbal. The main and ultra-wide angle sensor are exactly the same Sony IMX766 with 50 megapixel resolution and 2 micrometer pixel size. So they share the same colors, sharpness and contrast. Also brand new is Mary Silicon, Oppo's own image processor. It can do 18 trillion calculations per second and that reduces noise, loading times and improves dynamic range. Oppo loves that thing so much they even printed the kinda stupid name on the back. But hey, still better than P2D50T, right? And let's not forget get the logo on the back, which is bigger than the Oppo one, Hasselblad. The expensive Swedish camera maker will work with Oppo for 3 years, much like they do with OnePlus. Right now it's only software based. Alright, let's get into the pictures. Here's the Pixel 6 Pro, iPhone 13 Pro and Galaxy S22 Ultra. I would not have thought that Oppo can do so well. Insanely high dynamic range, 
top notch sharpness, very vivid colors, but not oversaturated. And when it gets dark, the strengths come out even more. Oppo always shoots the quickest and never longer than two seconds and yet their images are the most detailed with the most dynamic range and least noise. Samsung and Oppo talking a lot about night videos this year, so I compared the two and it's not even close. The Mary Silicon and the 5-axis stabilization are not just marketing. And I can't believe what I'm about to say here, but maybe, yeah just maybe, this is the best smartphone camera right now. And the ultra wide angle is without question the best there is. The sharpest, the brightest, with the best colors and also an autofocus and macro mode. What more can I say? It's better than most main cameras and I enjoyed shooting with it. Hasselblad has added free master style filters, but they are too aggressive for my liking. While the camera design suggests that there are two lenses, there's actually a third, the Tele. It's the same 2x lens from the predecessor. Sharper than a digital crop, but with less dynamic range and worse colors. The Galaxy S22 Ultra outperforms the Find X5 Pro in terms of zoom, which is a shame because Oppo had a really good zoom in the Find X2 Pro. What a waste of potential. The battery is 10% bigger than in the predecessor and don't worry, you don't have to do the math on that, I already did it. It's 5000 mAh, which is quite impressive because the device feels super slim. Under full load, the Snapdragon HN1 can swallow the whole battery, but during day-to-day -day use, it's great. I came up with average values between 5 and 6 hours of screen on time. That can be classified as above average. Furthermore, Oppo talks about 1600 instead of the usual 800 charging cycles. Charging is done with 80 watts, which, as I had to discover, is a lie. With the old 65 watt charger, my Find X5 Pro took exactly 32 minutes, same as with the 80 watt one. Wireless is done with 50 watts and takes 15 minutes longer. These are still great numbers, but Xiaomi manages to do the same in 17 minutes. Conclusion: The Find Find X5 Pro is an incredible, great smartphone and I really enjoyed using it and I would love to recommend it to everybody, but the price is insane. 1299 euros. It is like Oppo wants to say, we are the best, this is the best smartphone and therefore it can be the most expensive one. But if you're going that route, you really have to deliver in all aspects, such as the tele, the fingerprint sensor or the display brightness. It is a 150 euro price increase compared to the predecessor, even though it's more of a evolutionary upgrade. Maybe they don't want to sell the Pro and instead the regular X5, which has a worse design display and processor, but the same great camera system. Well, I just don't know. But I hope this video helped you a lot and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.